So, is your wave runner pissing? Let's talk about that. everybody, it's Captain Frank with the Ship's Log. First of all, Happy New Year. Hope everybody had a wonderful New Year uh, coming in this year and hopefully this year will be better than last year. Um, it's January, it's 50 degrees outside, uh, jet skis in the garage. Sorry about the messy garage, but it is what it is. Um, I hate this time of year because it's, uh, at least here in Atlanta where I am, it's, it's not uh, the best time to go out and play around in the water. But um, one of the things that I do like to do around this time of year for both my boat and my jet ski, of course, is to, hey, if I've got some projects I want to do, uh, this is a good time to do it. So if you have a Yamaha, uh, you probably noticed that when you first bought it, if you bought it from a dealer, um, that you have a, a spout of water that uh, shoots up from the back of the machine. Um, visibility spout, pisser. Uh, vertical water spout, whatever you want to call it, but uh, Yamahas were designed uh, to have that vertical spout of water shoot up out, and, and some people hate them, and some people love them. It just depends on who you are. So, uh, But let's talk about what that is for a bit and why it's there, and then we'll talk about you know what you can do if you don't necessarily want that all the time. Uh, first of all, again, it's called a visibility spout. That's the official name for it. But uh, the whole idea is that by shooting a spout of water up in the air uh, at the back of the machine, it, the machine's more visible. So if you happen to be um, in a bunch of waves, for example, and uh, the waves would normally obscure your uh, people being able to see you, then that spout of water uh, actually allows you to be seen. If you're behind another boat, for example, people can tell that there's a PWC back there. Um, it makes them see you a lot easier. So, uh, in hopes, of course, of avoiding uh, any type of uh, an accident or something. Um, so that's the upside. That's the reason they're there. Uh, the downside is, of course, a lot of us, we like to ride with our friends, uh, our riding buddies. Um, we often don't ride alone. And, of course, when we're riding with a large group of people, we often do uh, slow down every once in a while. We kind of gather together uh, on our machines and maybe uh, just chat a little bit or discuss uh, which direction we're going to head next and so on and so forth. Uh, in close situations like that, now all of a sudden it's almost like you have this uncontrollable tail uh, that's uh, at, at, at behind your machine that uh, you're, you're spraying everybody and so on and so forth. So uh, that can be a problem there. That's one reason why a lot of people don't like it. So, um, so what can you do about it? Now a lot of people just simply disconnect it. And, uh, and that's fine. Um, but what if you want to be able to, hey, turn it on when I want it and turn it off when I don't. So if I'm riding by myself, hey, I can turn it on so I can be seen a lot easier. If I'm riding with the group, I can turn it off so I don't have to worry about uh, spraying people that don't want to be sprayed. So it's actually really easy to do. So we're gonna talk about uh, how to do that. You're only gonna need three things. Uh, the first thing that you'll need uh, is one of these. This is actually a valve. This is actually made by Rainbird. It is not uh, designed to be put on a jet ski or anything. This is actually designed for irrigation systems. But you can find these at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. And uh, you can also find them on Amazon, but I'll let you know now. On Amazon they are more expensive, so I would definitely check your local hardware store uh, before going to Amazon. So, uh, but you need, need one of these valves. Uh, very, very cheap and of course you're going to need uh, two of these uh, right here um, these are these uh, stainless steel clamps make sure you get stainless steel uh, because you don't want it to rust especially if you do riding in salt water you don't want this thing to rust so get two stainless steel clamps and you're good to go now let's talk about what to do with these Okay, let's talk about the setup that we have here. If you've actually ever looked under your machine in the back here, you'll see that, of course, you have a gate that uh, that will uh, pull down uh, whenever 
um, you put it into reverse or, or neutral. Um, but the way Yamaha has set this up is there is simply a hose that actually goes from the uh, front part of the jet um, all the way up here to connect to uh, this hole right here, which is where the water comes out. So in order to make this just a little easier to get to, the first thing you might wanna do is to go ahead and just pull the gate down to get it out of the way so that you can actually work. If you look to the left side here, there's a little bracket that if you just kind of push back and pull out, it unhooks the gate and then you can pull the gate down. And when you do that, you'll see right here is actually where that hose connects and then it actually comes all the way up. Now you see right here, I have actually already connected a valve into mine. So I've already actually already done this job, but we're gonna talk about exactly how I did it. Uh, now, all I did literally is I cut out a little section of this hose and put the valve in and simply put a clamp on either side. So, and so now what I can do is anytime I want, I can simply turn it on if I do want the vertical spout or I can turn it off uh, if I don't want the vertical spout. Now the key is, is when you install this, you do want to make sure that you install it high enough so that it is not going to interfere with the gate. So you wanna make sure that you move that gate up and down and you check to make sure that you've installed it high enough in here so that it's not going to get in the way. So if you install it, uh, too close down here, as you can imagine, every time this gate comes up, it's going to hit that and you're, it's probably eventually going to, um, damage that, wear it out or something, but you don't want that. So make sure that it's plenty far above the gate right here. Um, uh, so that it's actually not going to touch and you should be good to go. Um, literally the job takes 10 minutes. So it's not a long time as uh, at all. Uh, all you needed is a screwdriver, a pair of uh, um, heavy duty scissors or something to cut the hose and you're good to go. If you look on there, you see I probably cut maybe an inch or so uh, out of a hose and that was about it. Very, very easy job um, and practically anyone can do it. And now anytime you want, if you want to turn the stream on, you turn that way. If you want to turn it off, you turn it that way. And that's all there is to it. So what do you think? Pretty easy, right? I mean, 10 minutes, and here's the best part. These parts right here, less than six bucks. So for very little time and very little money, you can actually set it up to where you can turn that spout on or off whenever you feel like it. So a really, really, really easy job. So why don't y'all let me know, comment uh, down below. Did you disable yours? Are you gonna do this? Do you like having yours enabled? Do you not care? So uh, leave a comment below, let me know what you think. Also, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe. Please don't forget to share this with everybody that you know. And uh, if you'd like to have me talk about something else in the future, uh, please uh, comment down in the uh, section below as well and let me know if you'd like me to talk about something. Until then, thank you so much for watching and we'll talk to you next time.